us Americans love our cars, which means our traditional American McMansions always feature large garages with motorized garage doors. The ubiquity of these makes them a great target for home automation, giving us a pass to write rules to open and close a door without investing in a lot of hardware or finding a smart lock that matches the decor of the house. Follow along as I integrate all three of my old garage door openers with Home Assistant to pave the way for future automation projects. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this project useful. So first off, we need some hardware for this project. We're going to need a sensor that can tell us when the garage door is closed and a relay that can trigger the garage door opener to open or close. So for the sensor, I've chosen this Akara door and window sensor. I bought it from AliExpress, but they sell it elsewhere. It's Zigbee based, and it's designed to stick on with foam tape to a door or a window and tell you when it's open or closed. For the relay, I've chosen the Sonoff 4-Channel Pro. And the reason I chose the 4-Channel Pro is because each relay is independent. The three contacts of the relay are brought out to a screw terminal, and there's not a shared live and neutral. This means I can connect up to four garage door openers directly without having to worry about common wiring being connected between the openers. If you're only looking for one garage door opener, Shelly makes a product that works well too. So in order to use this sawn off with Home Assistant, we're gonna have to flash it with some alternative firmware. I like to use Tasmoda when I'm flashing pre-built devices. So let's, let's get in here. So here's what we got inside. So what I've done is I've soldered a four pin header onto this header here. And it's actually labeled 3.3 volt RX TX ground. So these are the pins we need to connect to the serial port on the ESP8266 processor that's part of this. And that lets us reprogram it with Tasmatizer. So to flash this thing with Tasmoda, I use this cable from Adafruit. It's a USB to serial adapter that's three volt power and logic. Since the Sonoff devices need 3.3 volt power and 3 volt logic, this one can plug directly in, except the pinout doesn't quite match. So to match the pinout, I use these, and I plug these into the USB serial cable, and then they allow me to plug individual colored wires into the individual pins on the Sonoff. So pinout we care about here. Uh, so we got ground. Uh, we don't need CTS and RTS. And then we have TXD and RXD. And we need to swap these because the RX and TX labels on the Sonoff 4 Channel Pro are relative to the Sonoff, not relative to the computer. So the Sonoff's transmit becomes the computer's receive, and the computer's transmit becomes the Sonoff receive. So once we've plugged that in, we're gonna use this tool called Tasmatizer. There's a link down in the description for it. And in order to get the ESP chip into the bootloader mode, we have to hold the GPIO zero button, which thankfully in this case is wired to button zero. So unplug the 3.3 volt jumper and then hold the first switch. It's labeled S1 on the PCB. And while you're holding that switch, push in the 3.3 volt jumper with the rest of the wires connected. And give it a second and then you can go ahead and let go of the switch. And now we'll click Tasmatize. So it's connected to the 8285, which is the same chip as the 8286, but with built-in memory. And it's writing Tasmoda. Okay, now it says to power cycle the device. So again, pull out the 3.3 volt wire, but leave the rest of them and then plug it back in. So now we need to load this configuration from the Sonoff page. So we go to Tasmoda, we search for the 4Channel Pro R3, which is the module I'm using, and it's got this configuration string. So we'll hit, oops, so we're gonna hit copy. Then we're gonna go back here and we're gonna click send config. And so we're gonna say module template and click template and then paste the string. And while we're at it, we can also set our MQTT server and our Wi-Fi. So whatever your SSID is and your password and whatever your home assistant server or wherever you're hosting your MQTT broker, you can put that information in here and then click save. And the Tasmatizer will push all of this configuration changes to the Tasmoda firmware on the Sonoff. Now it says device will restart. So if you typed your Wi-Fi information incorrectly, you should be able to click get IP and it should tell you the IP address. And from there, we can go to the configuration page to configure Tasmoda. So this is what I'm starting with. There's three garage door openers here and all of them are wired to the center one across the ceiling. 
because there's this aftermarket rolling code receiver here. So I'm gonna add my sawed off four channel pro onto the strut here and wire it in to all three openers. So I got this sawed off wired in. I got a 12 volt supply going up there to power brick. And I ran six wires from the comm that normally open on each of these three relays down to piggyback on the three channels here on this module. And these get wired out to the other openers. So this one here, one over there and the one behind me. So now I should be able to push a button here and it should turn the relay on and then I push the button again to turn it off. So. so that works, but the relays don't turn off automatically. They stay on until I push the button a second time. So first we're going to configure the TAS motor device locally a little bit. So let's give it a name, Garage Doors. And this is going to be garage door south, center, and north. So one other thing we want to do is every time someone pushes a button, we don't want to just hold the button in on the garage door. So the command we want to look is called pulse time. So if you read the manual here, it says pulse time number is um, the number of tenths of a second to keep the relay on. So someone says turn on garage door opener number, garage door opener south. Instead of keeping the relay on, it will turn it on and then turn it back off. So in this case, we would probably like to set it something about 15, so one and a half seconds. And we're gonna do that for all three of the relays. So we're gonna do console here, and reset pulse time. 1, 2, 15. So even though we're not using this relay, I'm going to toggle it anyway so you can see what happens. So if I toggle it, it turns on, and it turns back off. So all three of the other relays would do this, except pushing them would actually open the garage door right now, which I don't want to do. So now we come into Home Assistant using the Tasmoda integration, and it found all of this stuff for us. So it found the garage door's device, and there's three entities, garage door center, north, and south. And we're going to rename them a little bit. Now we can use these automations to trigger the garage door. So in Home Assistant, we're going to use a feature called the template cover. And this lets us create a cover in Home Assistant, which is normally used for things like blinds or things that go up and down. And we can create a cover that's based on the combination of other entities. So based on sensors and actuators. So one of the examples they have on this template cover page is for garage door. And so this describes how to set up a template cover for a garage door. But their example goes into detail on a lot of different ways to set it up. Um, so a lot of these options aren't necessarily right for our case. So for example, they're using a sensor, which says the position of the garage door in percent from zero to hundred, but we need to use a binary sensor instead. And I'm not entirely sure why they did this, but their close says turn off the switch. So open cover, um, they say if, if the garage door sensor is off, which means that the garage door is closed, then you allow it to open. So they say switch turn on to open. But then for close cover, they say switch turn off. And I'm not sure if that's because they're using a bi-directional relay in their example or something like that. Um, but I've modified this a little bit to work with the, the setup that I have. And so if I come over here to what I have, what I did is I said the value template is a binary sensor. So I used is state and is state on. So if the binary sensor is on and the garage door is closed, otherwise it's open. And then in all cases here, so to open the cover, we check the binary sensor south contact is off, which means that it's safe to open because it's currently closed. And then we switch dot turn on, which means we push the button on the switch and the switch turns itself back off. And we do the same for closed cover. We check if the garage door is open, which means it's safe to close. And for stop cover, we always let it stop. The interesting quirk about this is because all three of these are basically just pushing the button on the garage door opener. If you push the stop button, it may or may not stop. It may start. So you really should be watching or at least listening to your garage door opener. You shouldn't just be blindly pushing these buttons while you're away from home. 
because the garage door might not do what you expect, and you don't have a lot of control of telling it, I want to go down, you're just telling it, move, or stop moving, with the same button. Um, and then for the icon template, it's, it's pretty similar. You use is state, binary sensor, on, and then we use the open or closed icon. So this exact configuration is down in the link below. There's a link to my website where I posted this. You can copy and paste from here and modify it as you need. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing so YouTube can recommend more from me in the future.